Your name rose from your eyes lost in gazing. Your name rose from your eyes lost in gazing. The law of existence is love, to affirm something else through what we do. All our life is meant for something greater, for God. Our life is made for you, Christ. I seek your face. I seek your face. This is the essence of time. I seek your face. This is the essence of the heart. I seek your face. This is the nature of reason. The rediscovered face. Seek the Lord while he may be found. I discovered the holy face of Manopedilo during the exposition of the Holy Shroud in Turin. My interest increased when I heard about the Pope's visit in 2006. This Akeiro Poetos of Christ, an image not made by earthly hand, was rediscovered just a little over 50 years ago. There are not many certainties about it, but not so few either. Its story is interwoven with that of three other Akeiro Poetoi, and with the traces they have left insistently throughout history. The Vale of Camulia, the Mandilian of Edessa, the Roman Veronica, and the Vale of Manobello. Are they four images of Christ, or four names that the same veil has borrowed throughout history? The cloth taken from a fountain, the towel sent by Jesus to Abgar, the veil impressed on the way to Calvary, and the shroud mentioned by the evangelists. Four stories. For how many veils? The elements they have in common are the luminous veil, wide open eyes, traces of the passion, miracles, and the people's enthusiasm. Our journey starts from the oldest image, the Camulliana, whose history begins around the 4th century in Camulia in Cappadocia. A text written between 560 and 574 tells of a wooden, a woman, Hypatia, who could not believe in Jesus without seeing him. One day she found a portrait on a piece of linen in her fountain. Hypatia wrapped it in her tunic, and the image left a second impression on the cloth that was later passed on to Caesarea. A third copy was sent to a woman of Diobulon in Pontus. The city of Pontus was besieged and destroyed by barbarians in 554. In exchange for help, the emperor was offered the Camulliana, which was moved to Constantinople in 574. It has been told since ancient times, and in, until today it is considered so, that it was created by divine art, and that it was not produced either by the hands of a weaver or painted by a painter. In Constantinople at the time of Tiberius, a widow received a new copy which she left to the nuns of Melitine. The Camulia became the imperial palladium and it accompanied the imperial army in military campaigns in Africa and Persia. It is credited with the victory of Constantine in 581. In 586, under Maurice II, General Philippicus showed his soldiers the image of God made man, whose eyes were full of tears before their victorious battle on the river Arzaman. In 622, before departing for the war against Persia, Heraclius greeted the people holding the Camulia as a banner in his hands. He took the divine and venerated image a copy of the document not written by human hands. During Heraclius' war, the nuns of Melitine took refuge in Constantinople. Patriarch Sergius hosted them and asked if he could see the Camulliana. 
they let him see it, and he then kept it for himself. He subsequently began to suffer from nightmares and various tribulations which only ceased when he gave it back to the nuns. This is the last that is heard of the Camulia. Why was the Camulia forgotten? Was it lost during the Persian Wars? Was it destroyed during iconoclasm? In Constantinople, it is said that the patriarch Germanus entrusted their Keropoeta to the sea. Now this icon, travelling upright, reached the river Tiber in the great city of Rome, soaking wet up to the ribs. When the blessed Pope Gregory saw it, he walked towards it and received it into his arms. As old Simeon greeted the infant Jesus, and he laid it in the temple of the holy apostle Peter. In 752, Anna Poetus of the Saviour is mentioned in Rome for the first time. Under the threat of an invasion of the Lombards, Pope Stephen II invoked divine protection and walked barefoot in procession, carrying the sacred image on his shoulders. This is believed to be the icon from Constantinople, mentioned by the three Eastern Patriarchs and preserved in the ancient chapel of the Popes, the Sancta Sanctorum, or Holy of Holies. The image is almost invisible and recalls Christ enthroned. The face was added on the veil around 1100 and there is a clearly visible spot on the cheek. 